For nine weeks, I've worked on crafting a stone handle dagger named Serenity. It's almost finished, but before the final touches, I'll dip it in a special acid called ferric chloride. We've got the blade cleaned off really well, got a wire to hang it on. I'm gonna go ahead and soak it in the ferric chloride solution right here, and that's gonna etch the 1084 steel and leave the 15 and 20 steel nice and bright. This first quick etch is one of my favorite parts of knife making. After all the weeks and weeks of time I put in this knife, we're finally gonna get to see what this Damascus pattern looks like on the finished blade. The blade's been etching for its first five minute cycle. Let's take it out and look at the pattern. Whoa, that looks so good. Oh, it's so fine, but yet coarse. It's got a, a really good concentration of really fine W's mixed in with a bunch of coarse stuff too. And a whole bunch of these cool little flowery petal looking things. Now that the blade's done etching, it's time to do our coffee darkening process to the blade. So for that, I'm gonna use a drywall mud pan, some hot water, and a little Nescafe instant bold coffee, or dark roast rather. Coffee darkening will make the 1084 in the pattern extremely dark, giving us a really high contrast etch that'll look beautiful. That looks like enough. It actually doesn't really do anything to me at all. But I think there was a time in my life when that sound used to really bug me. Sounds like the Titanic sinking. <laughs> you know, when their ship's sinking, they put all these like metal creaking sounds in. <laughs> Hot fire. The blade's been neutralized for five minutes. I just rinsed it off real quick and I'm gonna stick it right in the coffee here. I've got some wires to suspend it on so it won't be touching anything except for on the tang and the very tip of the blade, some really little wires. I'm gonna let the blade stay in the coffee for about six or seven hours, then take the blade off, blow it dry, and let the coffee finish cure overnight. The next day. It's the next day, I let the blade stay in the coffee mixture for six hours. The next thing I wanna do is get rid of all this yellow and dark tint that's kind of all over on the blade, especially the 15 and 20. It's really discolored, has this yellow and kind of black weird stuff on it. So my secret weapon for this is sunshine cloth. This is made for the uh, jewelry polishing industry. They're cloths with some little micro abrasives in them, in them. Really, really fine micro abrasives. And I'm gonna gently go over the entire blade and try to shine up the uh, 15 and 20, get it looking nice and silver again, and hopefully not rub away all the dark 1084. If the coffee darkening finish is really good and holds on well, then I should be able to rub on it a lot with this sunshine cloth before I rub the dark off of the 1084. If the coffee darkening finish was done properly, as I use the sunshine cloth on the blade, it shouldn't rub any of the darkness off of the 1084. I want the 15 and 20 nice and silver and all the 1084 jet black. So it's actually three days later. I have been struggling with the coffee darkening on this blade like you would not believe. This blade has actually been coffee darkened I think four or maybe five times now. I've lost count and I'm finally to where I'm happy with the blade. I think it looks very good. We've got nice black blacks and the 15 and 20s nice and bright silver. The next thing we need to do is put a Carnuba wax finish on the blade. This is gonna enhance how the coffee finish looks and add a layer of protection to the Damascus as well. For this, I'm gonna be using 100% Carnuba wax. This stuff is really cool. It actually comes in this very, very hard bar form. So in order to actually apply the Carnuba wax, we gotta heat the blade up. And I like to use a heat gun for that. I'm gonna heat the blade up to 180 degrees, which is the melting point for this Carnuba wax, put it all over the blade, and then wipe the excess off with a Kleenex tissue. Don't worry, I'm not gonna ruin the temper in the blade. In order to do that, I'd have to heat the blade up over 425 degrees. I'm only gonna be heating it up to about 200 with this heat gun though. After heating the blade up a bunch and wiping it down and heating the blade up and wiping the blade down, I think I'm where I'm happy with it. 
it's tricky to get just the right amount of wax on. You don't want too much or it'll look, uh, it'll look real streaky and look like there's chunky wax on there. But if you don't have enough, then it's defeating the purpose of having that protective wax on there in the first place. Think I've got it though. I'm gonna let this blade cool down and then we're gonna polish it once again with some sunshine cloth. Because once this wax cools down, it's gonna have kind of a flat look to it. So we need to polish it to get it back up to looking um, nice and shiny again. I put the wax on, now we're taking the wax off. Actually, this isn't really taking anything off, we're just polishing the wax because it dries with kind of a flat finish on it and this will just get it looking shiny. So if I go over here to this side where I haven't done anything yet, you can see the, the, the dark stuff isn't real shiny or anything. I literally just rub on it a little bit like this and boom, it just pops and really makes it come to life. I just finished polishing the Carnuba wax finish on the blade and it looks amazing. I love how this Damascus looks. It's got a bunch of really fine stuff, but also a good balance of coarse stuff. I wanted this pattern to be really fine and have something that you could look at up close and find new things to look at when you really get close and look at it. But I also wanted it to be eye catching from a distance. So that's why I did a combination of really fine and bold stuff. After the miserable time I had getting this blade to coffee darken, I'm so happy with how it came out. It looks beautiful. Now that the blade is etched and coffee darkened, there's one more area of the knife I need to focus my attention on. And that's the fittings. They still have a 220 grit finish on them. I need to get that all the way up to 3000 grit so I can buff them and gun blue them. I'm gonna jump right in and start sanding on the guard. I would hand sand the fittings to an even finer grit than 3000 if I could. I've tried a bunch of different brands of finer sandpaper though and I can't find anything that's better than the 3000 grit wet dry 3M sandpaper I'm currently using. And I've tried so many different ones. I've found some 5000 and 7000 and different grits like that but they seem to always have these random rogue pieces of grit that are a little bit coarser than even 3000 and I end up with these stray scratches. So for now, I'm really happy with the 3M 3000 grit and I can move on to buffing. With this buffing process, I wanna to try to get the pieces as close as I possibly can to a beautiful, perfect mirror finish. It's very difficult to get there though, because if you have one little stray grit on your buffing wheel, it'll scratch up the entire part with like a thousand little scratches. I just finished finishing and buffing the fittings. The pieces look very good right now. I've gotten rid of all the 3000 grit scratches. We have a beautiful mirror finish on here. What I ended up going with was this Marard buffing wheel here with some 0.5 micron buffing compound, uh, Luxor Marard, and that worked really well. And I did it at about 1600 RPM. That seemed to be the sweet spot. It's finally time to finish all the fittings by gun bluing them. What we're gonna do is basically do a controlled form of rust, gun bluing. I'm gonna be putting them in caustic salts that are like 290 degrees, and it's going to form a layer of black oxidation. Hopefully it'll come out perfectly the first time. Oh, it's shiny. I said it before, I'll say it again, it looks, looks good when it's wet. The number one key to gun bluing is getting your parts nice and clean. If you have any oil residues or anything on there, you'll end up with some really weird colorful spots on your finished part possibly, and we don't want any colorful spots. We want a nice black finish, even everywhere without any spots. So I clean everything in Dawn dish soap with Dawn dish soap, and then I move on to an ultrasonic cleaner. I'm using a chemical cleaner in the ultrasonic cleaner and that really helps make sure I don't have any oil residues or anything on there. I normally like to clean one part at a time and get them into the ultrasonic cleaner. And then by the time I'm done cleaning all the parts, the first part was in there long enough that I can go ahead and get it rinsed off and into the gun blowing salts. As I add the parts into the ultrasonic cleaner, I'm trying to get the wires that hang the parts just the right length so that later on when I submerge them in the gun blowing salts, they'll be at the right depth. Got all the parts cleaned off with some soapy water. I've got them in the ultrasonic cleaner with a little bit of Brownells uh, chemical cleaner in there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and let them soak for about 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes. I'm gonna take the uh, front spacer out and start with that one. 
I've got some clean distilled water here. I'm just gonna lightly brush it off with this clean makeup brush. One of the instructions in Brownell's uh, things, not necessarily a makeup brush, but to just brush them off with something. Kind of hard to get every part of it there. And then we're gonna go into the gun bluing salts for about 10 minutes. Next up, I'm gonna get the pommel in the bluing salts. I'll quickly get it over to my distilled water here. Brush it off, just to make sure there's no goobers or anything kind of stuck to it. And then we're going into the bluing salts. I don't feel it touching the bottom, so that's a good thing. And for the final piece, we're gonna get the guard into the bluing salts. I don't think it's touching anything. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Looks good when it's wet. And we're gonna go directly into the boiling water to neutralize the salts for about 10 minutes. Dissolve the salts that may be trapped in little pockets or down in like the tang slot or something. You don't want those salts trapped in there because over time they could grow out and cause major rust and oxidation to start creeping out of your part. Wow, that looks, that looks really good when it's wet. Look at that gold pop to the boiling water. That gold looks so, so creamy. The water's not boiling. The parts have been boiling for a while. I'm gonna get them out of the boiling water and put them directly into some water displacing oil and leave them in there uh, pretty much overnight. So I'm gonna start with the, uh, start with the guard. They sure looked funny when I took them out right there, but that's probably just from minerals and residue of uh, salt and stuff coming off there, hopefully. I'm gonna let these sit overnight and then I'll be able to clean them off and see how the bluing job actually looks. I've got a good feeling though about it. They looked pretty good coming out of the bluing salts. Tomorrow. So it's the next day and I just finished getting all the oils removed from our parts and doing the final inspection of them. The bluing came out Beautifully, I couldn't have asked for the bluing to come out any better. It looks so even, so jet black, beautiful dark black mirror finish on the pieces. I cannot wait to get this knife together. It is so close. We have one more thing we need to do before we can do the final assembly, and that is to sharpen this dagger. Right now, there's probably about a five or 10 thousandths of an inch flat spot on the edge, so it's not actually sharp. And for this to be a functional piece of art, I've got to get it hair popping sharp. It's gonna be a lot of work though because this is a narrow dagger with a really long blade so there's lots of edge to get sharpened and the bevels are ground on a pretty aggressive angle which means I'll have to make the sharpening on an even more aggressive angle which makes it a little bit more difficult. It's kind of... Can we just skip to the part where it's razor sharp? Man. Look how much edge there is on this thing. 
It's all edge. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. 31 inches to be exact. <laughs> so it'd be like me sharpening one edge that's that long. All right. Get my movement down. Okay, nothing looks ruined yet. You might have noticed I covered the blade in office tape. The reason for that is so I don't scratch any of the blade as I'm sharpening the edge. And also, if I end up laying the blade down a little bit too flat while I'm using the leather belt, the leather could kind of rub off the coffee darkening finish and mess up the etch on the blade too high up and kind of ruin the way things look. So the office tape really helps protect it from all that. I just finished sharpening the dagger. That took me a while and was quite a bit of a challenge. This dagger is pretty thick. It's real, uh, it's got a lot of taper to it and the edge bevels aren't very wide, so they come together at a pretty extreme angle, which made it so I had to sharpen it even more of an extreme angle. I got it to where I'm happy with it though. We've got a nice, bright, shiny, sharpened uh, edge bevel. It is finally time to assemble this dagger. All the components are done. The fittings are done, the gold inlay's done, the stone's done, the stone fits, the blade's done, etched, sharpened, ready to go. Are you tired of wasting valuable time searching for the tools and materials I use? I understand. Introducing the Mastersmith's Toolkit. It's a downloadable PDF that brings together all the links I use in one convenient place. Imagine having instant access to all the resources I use right at your fingertips. The best part is, the Mastersmith's Toolkit is absolutely free. That's right, sign up today and have instant access to all the tools and materials I use without spending a dime. So click the link in the description and sign up today. Really afraid I'm gonna bang the tip into the granite or something. Guard. Front spacer. Handle. Pommel. Tighten. Finished. After months of working on it, the Serenity Dagger is finally done. This thing came out so good. This is probably one of my all-time favorite pieces, just because of the stone handle. I've been wanting to do stone handles for so long. This char right handle looks so good with the black fittings. The black and the gold and the dark blade with all that dark 1084 and the silvery 15 and 20. It came out amazing. Oh, it feels really good. The stone handle didn't end up being that heavy. I thought the stone handle would be a, a lot heavier, but I went for a real skinny profile just so I wouldn't end up with a handle that was too heavy. And I left the blade a little extra thick to uh, help compensate for that. The balance point came out very, very nice. It balances right here, right in front of the uh, Ricasso, right where the blade edge starts. That feels wonderful. I really like this fuller, how it runs down into the guard. I've never done that before. Having a, a fuller just disappear under the guard like that. I love the front spacer shape, that real curvy front spacer and this uh, extra dramatic pommel, how it just swells out and gets really large at the end. I love the handle shape. I probably went more extreme on this handle shape than any handle I've ever done. It starts out pretty big up here, big oval shape, and then it gets really skinny and turns into this nice round shape on the other end for the pommel. It came out so good. The Damascus is really pretty. There's a little chatoyance to the blade when you move it around in the light, especially bright light. It looks amazing in the sun. I love the Serenity Dagger. Oh yeah, another thing I've never done before, I've never done an asymmetrical guard on a dagger. I think that's really cool. I mean, I did a D guard dagger once, but it still had a regular symmetrical guard. What I mean by asymmetrical is one quillion curves forward and the other kind of curves back. This thing is so nice. I can't believe it's finally done. The Serenity Dagger.
I would say my overall favorite part of this Serenity Dagger is the stone handle. I've been wanting to do it for so long. It took so much effort to go and find the stone and everything. Working with it didn't turn out to be that much more difficult than working with uh, some other delicate materials, but just working up the courage to do it and then getting into the right equipment and everything, I love this char right handle. This purple and black theme, uh, I've just been crazy about uh, like deep purples and blacks together recently. My biggest regret with this dagger is just not jumping in and doing a stone handle sooner because this came out so, so cool. I think I was just too afraid and I should have just jumped in there and done it years ago and then I would have been on my fifth or 10th or 15th handle by now. So if you've got something you wanna try, don't hesitate as long as I did for stone handles, 12 years, just jump in there and give it a shot. I hope you've enjoyed this Serenity Dagger build and got a lot out of this series. I will see you in the next video. May the fours be with you. Bye-bye.